Uh, today is the first Sunday morning that we are back doing like small groups and Bible study at the first service. The last time we had Sunday school Bible study for the youth in the morning on Sunday was the second Sunday of March. It is currently the second to last Sunday in August. So long overdue, very excited. You remember this room? see any of the students or anything but it went really well this morning it was awesome now now to spend time with the family but also watch some soccer welcome to day 169 and we are looking at first Kings chapter 22 as well as 2 Chronicles 18. Up until this point, the majority of the time when we're covering a section in Kings and Chronicles, it usually covers like years worth of information. Today we are covering just one story. And so we're kind of going down to a micro level and looking at just one event that had serious ramifications for Israel as well as Judah and their history or their and their future that would follow. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And in these two chapters, we see that King Jehoshaphat and King Ahab make a pact to join forces together to go fight the Syrians at Ramoth Gilead and to retake that portion of land. There you go, buddy. Right over there, okay? Which part, what? But before they go and fight the Syrians to take back this land, Jehoshaphat wants to inquire of the Lord if they should actually go do this and if they will be successful. Ahab brings in these prophets that are not of God and they all say the same thing, that you're going to be victorious and it's going to be great. But Jehoshaphat knows like, hey, these guys, I know they're saying this, but is there anyone here like a prophet of God that we can inquire of? And Ahab, he says... Well, there's one guy, but I don't like him because he never prophesies anything nice to me. So we are then introduced to the prophet Micaiah, who the messenger goes uh, to get. And when the messenger approaches Micaiah, he, he's, he's in prison. He says, this is what all the prophets have said about the success that Israel, that Ahab and Joshua will have. You should say the same thing. But Micaiah responds by saying, that I must speak what the Lord will tell me. So Micaiah comes before Ahab and prophesies, but he does say the same thing that all the other prophets say. And Ahab is basically like, no, 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 Micaiah. Tell me really the truth. And Micaiah, he says that you will basically perish in battle and that Israel will be like sheep with no shepherd, that they'll be scattered. And, and it's really interesting because Micaiah says that he had this like vision of heaven where God was uh, kind of talking with himself as well as, you know, other angels and messengers around him saying, uh, how, how will we basically convince Ahab to go to the battle? And this one messenger angel pops up and says, hey, I will send a lying spirit or a lying tongue in his prophets that will tell him that he will be successful and therefore he'll, he'll go. Just a really interesting like picture that we get there. Then we come to the main event where they actually go out to battle and Ahab has this great idea that he will actually dress up like a regular soldier because whenever kings would go out to battle, they would wear different armor, things that would 
make them noticeable in terms of, oh, that's someone of high position. That's the commander. That's the king. And he tells Jehoshaphat, you dress up as the king in your kingly robes, and I'll dress as a soldier, right, to disguise himself. And it says in scripture that the Syrians were told by their commander to fight with no one else, but just to go after the king. So they saw Jehoshaphat, who was dressed in all his kingly attire for battle, and thought that that was Ahab. So they went to go fight him. But when they got close to fighting him, they realized, wait, that's not Ahab, that's Jehoshaphat. Then this is where it just gets crazy. It says that there was a soldier that randomly, like just shot off an arrow. And the arrow somehow found Ahab and pierced him in between his armor and eventually kills Ahab due to the loss of blood. And that's really the end of the story. But, you know, as I was reading this, one of the things that I kept thinking about was God had a very specific plan concerning Ahab, that Ahab was going to die in this battle. But yet Ahab, it seemingly did everything he could in his power to avoid that plan. I think how often in our own lives do we try to maybe not certainly avoid God, or yeah, maybe avoid God's plan, or we try to thwart God's plan, like we, God might reveal a plan to us or a purpose, and we, we do something else because we think we have a better idea. The reality with this story, and the reality with all things, is that no man can thwart God's plan. Like, no man can thwart God's plan. God is bigger. He's more powerful. He is more grand than man, and Whatever God wants to happen will happen. Whatever God says will happen will happen. It will be accomplished by him. And I think the the beautiful aspect of this truth for us today is, well, first off, we have to ask ask ourselves a question. Well, what then is God's plan today? What then is God's plan today for my life? How do I fit into that? And we know according to the gospel, we know according to Uh, God being rich in mercy and being rich in grace, that his plan is for you and I to be in right and intimate relationship with him through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is God's plan and purpose. And if you read Romans chapter 8, the last part of the chapter, it talks about how there's nothing that can separate us from God's love. The only thing that keeps that from happening is if we respond by not receiving that gift. But God has set everything up in such a beautiful way that all we have to do is respond in faith and belief and, and we are his. It's a, it's a really interesting story and I think we clearly see that no man can thwart God's plan. And God's plan was to die for you. His plan is to love you uh, and to save you. And we simply have to respond in faith and belief to that. And there's nothing better in life than that. Okay, um, time to go to Home Depot. Check out how smoky it is today. That little piece of mountain there usually is pretty clear. There's just kind of this haze. And we have to wear these wherever we go. It's just not a good combination with wearing a mask and there being smoke everywhere. We're here at Home Depot. We were gonna go to Ikea and pick something up, but they didn't have in stock what we were gonna get, right? Yes. So we're here looking at sod. nice grill, but I don't need a grill, right? I know it's kind of hard to tell, but I'm just trying to show you how red and how huge the sun is. Yes, that is the sun, and it is that red hue because of the smoke all over Colorado due to fires, but it's just 
it's it's hard to it's hard to see it on the vlog, but it's massive right now. Huge. 